7 Take 2 of the Yonder Woman podcast. My name is Melinda, I am known as Yonder Woman on Instagram and Ravelry, and today is Sunday the 19th of October. Apologies for the week delay in getting this episode out. I did record an episode last weekend, and thanks to the joys of technology not working, we weren't able to get the podcast ready. Some of the files worked, some didn't, and it just was a big mess. And Poor Damien trying to edit it all and do his best with it and try and extract audio and it just wasn't going to work because um, just no hope. So thank you very much to everyone for your messages on Ravelry about the delay in the podcast and fingers crossed this will get up okay today. So let's get straight into it um, and we'll look at broaching the subject. Broaching the subject this week is this gorgeous little sheep made out of yarn balls, how perfect. This is by Danielle V Green on Etsy and I've got the one that was a grey uh, option and there was also multicoloured yarn that you can get so so cute and I get so many compliments on this um, when I just wear it to work so non-knitting people they just think it's gorgeous and very me so yes it's a good one. And what I'm wearing today is the Be My Angel Shawl by Martina Bain. Um, as you can see I've got it looped around here but the pattern itself gets its name because it looks like angel wings it's all the way out so you actually knit part of each wing and then you join it in the middle so you can wear it looped like i had it before or it's also really good to just go around the shoulders and tie at the front um very very easy pattern i'd love to make another one i've just got so much on my queue i have um yeah just got too much else happening the yarn is blue moon fiber arts marine silk in the black onyx colorway this is merino silk and the marine silk of the name is uh, made from seaweed fibres which is very cool, it's very soft, got a little sheen to it. Um, it's all garter stitch, it's a very good pattern, very well explained so I highly recommend that one. And as well as just really liking the pattern, the reason I went and bought it as soon as I, it came out, it's mm, last year maybe, um, is because Angel is the nickname that Damien gave me when he very first started going out so anything with angel in it I sort of pick it up and go for it and speaking of Damien and I celebrated our ninth anniversary um, at the beginning of October and you may have seen on Instagram he put together a photo montage on Facebook for me of 42 photos of us from our relationship so 42 being the answer to the universe and everything and he also made me a poster of it so there we go angel very cute and that's one of our first couple photos and that was the time I was wearing the angel wings. So the first photo of us and then all these others and this is one of our most recent ones when we went to the steampunk ball. It's very romantic, very cute and the angel link. And he also got me a card that I'm going to frame because it's gorgeous Alice in Wonderland, the piggy. I love Alice. So yes, those are very exciting and gorgeous shawl, gorgeous things. Thanks, Damien. On with our prize draws. Prizes. So we have a couple of prize draws going at the moment. The first is for our 300 member giveaway. And excitingly, we're almost at 400. So we'll probably have another prize draw when we get up there. So if you haven't joined yet, come and join the group and everyone else spread the word. And we'll get more members and we can give them more prizes. So our first uh, prize, we have two, two prizes. Um, excuse me while I just get everything ready. We had a very kind donation from an Australian yarn company, Spinning Yarn Weaving Tails. And she sent us two of each colour of her beautiful yarn. So one winner will get the two purpley colours and one winner will get the greens. So this is from her Elements range and this is the fingering weight. She also does a DK and a worsted. And she also has a coupon code going, so in the show notes, if you go and have a look there, it'll give you the link to Spinning Yarns Weaving Tales. And use the code Yarnderwoman, and Joe will send you an invoice with the discount listed through PayPal. So it's very generous of you, Joe. Thank you. These yarns are named after places in Australia or elements of Australia. The green is called the Daintree, which is the Daintree Rainforest over on the eastern coast of Australia. And here's a photo of the colour inspiration for this. Not the exact photo that Joe used, but a photo of the Daintree Rainforest for you to see. The 
this lovely purple. This one is called Hardened Veggia and that's a type of flower and I've also got a photo of that one to show you here. And as you can see with these yams, they almost look like hand spun because the colours are sort of barber poled and mixed in together. So really, really gorgeous. I'm trying to get the light. That's a fairly good colour representation of them both. So without further ado, let's look at the winners. These winners were drawn by random.org, the random number generator website. And let me just have a look at my notes. The first winner drawn, and this person, um, if you contact me and you can have your pick of the colourways, and then the second winner can have the alternate colour. So the first winner was draw number eight, which was MS Trish Knits, who is Trish from California. Congratulations, Trish. Now, the question for this prize draw was to write uh, the name of your favourite flower, and Trish's favourite flower was Lavender Roses, which sound very lovely. So, our second winner was number 31, who was Red Salt Box, who was Lisa from the USA. And Lisa also liked roses, and she mentioned fragrant roses. So, thank you very much, Trish and Lisa, if you get in touch with me to uh, give me your colour selection and also your postal address and I'll get those out to you shortly. Thank you everyone for entering, it was very exciting. Oh, I'm not sure I told you, we had 106 entries for that one. Um, so thank you to everyone who entered and um, oh, so exciting as I said to have so many members. Something I also wanted to thank everyone for was um, all your wonderful feedback of uh, my mum Kathy being on the previous episode. She just thought it was so much fun and she was blown away by all the positive comments that she got from viewers um, on Ravelry and Instagram. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time, it really did make her day. She was so excited and she would love to come on again and especially show her garden. So thank you to everyone who requested that and uh, we'll definitely have mum back in another episode. She's on holidays at the moment looking at uh, gardens in other parts of Australia, which is very much up her alley. So. Once she's back in Perth, we'll get her on and we'll get a recording again. So, very exciting. And our second prize is one that's only been running for this past week on Ravelry, and that is to win your own brooch from the same creator as my yarn sheet here. This one is Vampire Cat, Dracula. And the prompt for this question, um, for this competition, was what would you dress up the cat and what costume would you put him in. So there were some very cute entries. So thank you everyone for those. And I'll just pull up my notes to see who the winner of this was. We had 17 entries and the random number generator pulled number three, who was Archeo or Archeo, Katie, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that CH, whether it's a hard or a soft sound. Katie is from Colorado and Katie will be mentioned later on in the uh, enabling thread or acquisitions thread. Thank you, Katie. She said she would dress the cat in a fez with a monocle and also linked to a knitting pattern that was called International Cat Hat Turkey. And it was actually a pattern for a red fez for your cat. So if anyone is out looking for that pattern, think no more about it. It's, it's on Ravelry. It's there for you. So, <laughs> so Katie, congratulations. This Dracula cat will be making its way to you. I'll get that in the post as soon as possible. Hopefully you'll get it for Halloween. But... One can never tell with the post between Australia and America how long it's going to take, so I'll do my best. Thank you again for everyone who entered, and we will have another competition to run next week that I will tell you about right now. Our next prize that we've got up for grabs is this gorgeous skein from Skein. <laughs> so I've mentioned skein yarns before. I used the top draw sock base to make the Whispering Pines shawl a few episodes ago. This base is the BFL sock, which is 100% superwash BFL, sock weight 4 ply, and it's in the Lady Muck colourway. Um, Skein is doing a lot of speckled dye bases at the moment, or colourway, sorry, not bases, and this is one of them, and it's got some gorgeous greens and purple, a little bit of fuchsia on the natural. So go over to the prize thread and enter there. One entry per person needs to be a member of the group to win. And I will draw this when I uh, record the next episode in two weeks' time. Good luck, everyone. And thank you, Kristen, for the gorgeous yarn. Finished objects. This is a bit of a shorter section than I was hoping it would be because I only have one thing and it's very small and it took me about maximum 30 minutes to finish. So <laughs> this is it. <laughs> This is a Christmas decoration. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry, so I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, I've held 
I've got this green and red, it's 100% wool, very not so soft. It was from like a local, you know, bulk craft shop place um, in the red and green, so held together. It's very easy, as I said, even sewing on the little star button all together 20 to 30 minutes. This is actually for a swap package um, that I'm putting together. I really like swaps, but because of the international postage, it can be pretty expensive to do, so I tend to be more selective with them. But Tiny Owl Knits, which is a group uh, based on Lovers of the Patterns by T Tiny Owl Knits, uh, who did the uh, Mr. Fox stole and the Bo Peep scarf, so ones that I've worn previously. They have a very, very, very active Ravelry group and they're often having swaps. They have monthly card swaps, monthly tea swaps. I've done a few of the tea swaps because that is something quite easy you can send uh, as a flat letter. So I do those every so often. And they always have a Tokmas swap, Tok being tiny owl knits. Um, so they're a big end of year swap um, and you get partnered up with someone and it's a secret. So they don't, you don't know who you're going to receive from. And you answer some questions and uh, put together the package. So this is one of the things for that. So even if my person is a viewer, they won't know until they get it. So that's that. And I'm also participating in a swap in the Juniper Grace group. We're doing a filler project bag swap. So for that one, you get partnered with the same person. So you know who it is. And then you get to know each other a little bit before sending off your package. So Lotta, I won't be mentioning anything about what's in your package because you have to wait and see. Um, on the Hungriest Knitter um, group, or in the group I should say, um, Rachel was had a poll up to see who would be interested in doing a swap and that would be a knitting and food swap. So um, I'm not sure when that's going to be happening but that's another option if that's something you want to get into. And I was thinking that we could do a swap in our group coming up for the end of the year. Um, I was going to say a Christmas card swap, but I know not everyone celebrates Christmas, so perhaps a greeting card swap or however you want to call it. Um, so if you would like to participate in that, I'll put up a thread in the Ravelry group, and perhaps if you want to participate, uh, just come along and make a notation in your entry whether you'd like it to be a Christmas card or a greeting card or you don't care or whatever. And as I said, to protect everyone from really expensive postage, because I know that you know there's a lot to spend money on at this time of year, if we make it a card swap, that means you can put whatever you like in the envelope that's flat. So keeping it so it will send as a letter. So to keep the postage down and to make it fair for everyone so that everyone's sending similar things. Um, but there's a lot you can put into flat envelopes to send. So let your imagination go, you know, stickers, letters, cards, photos, recipes, tea bags, all those sorts of things. So as much as you'd like to fit into your envelope with your card, um, and I think that would be really fun. And let me know whether you'd like it to be a secret, so you know your person doesn't know who they're going to receive from, or if you'd like to be partnered up so you get to know the person. I'm thinking maybe because it's you know small flat things, a secret one might be better, but hey, I'm happy to go with whatever everyone else wants to do. So hop over and have a look and let me know what you think. There is another finished object, but it's not mine because I didn't make it, but I really wanted to show you this. This is some fabulous sewing craft work from my cousin Megan, who created this wonderful toothless dragon from the uh, How, How to Train Your Dragon movies. Um, here's a photo of it. It's just stunning. My first work in progress I had been hoping would be a finished object for the recording. Um, four rows off and a bind off finishing it. What can I do? So <laughs> these are, or soon to be a pair, of the Happily Ever After Knits, a pattern by Susan B. Anderson. Um, I've modified it a little bit. In her pattern you do use different coloured yarns to do stripes. I've just used the one yarn and I've also put in a few pearl rows here just for a bit of interest. So I'll put this on to model for you. That's it there. And this is knit with the No Makers Sparkle Gnome Base in the Decepticons colorway. So it's got purples and blacks and the Stellina glitter. So very nice, good fit, little bit of interest with the pearls. And as I said, I'm six rows off finishing the second knit, so nearly there. This is something on my Christmas present list, so that's good. I am not getting 
worried but I've got quite a bit on my Christmas list that I need to get knitting for and I feel like I just never get any knitting time anymore. These I've been making on my commute um, to and from work but I've been taking a thermos of coffee with me in the mornings and I can't knit while holding the thermos and then sometimes on my train home I don't get a seat so I can't knit then so it's a whole thing. <laughs> but these should be definitely, if they're not finished by the next recording there's something wrong. They'll be a finished object next time and I'll block them out and have them all looking lovely for you. Before I show you my next work in progress, I'll show you my bag that the Swingerless Knits are in. This is Bling Your String. Very cute teapots in black and white. And my next work in progress is in this very cute bag by Villains. It's a yarn bath. I love it. And the next yarn I'm using, I haven't shown you this one before. This is some very fun self-striping and it is by Manic Pixie Dream Yarn in the Zoe base and the colourway is called Dream and Delirium the Endless which if you know the Sandman comics that's some of the characters in there referenced so these socks are going to be for Sophie, my stepdaughter for Christmas and as I mentioned a few episodes ago I really wanted to get into concurrent yarn knitting, uh, sock knitting so that I didn't end up with second sock syndrome and I love doing concurrent knitting so as you can see I've nearly got two socks done for some reason I've started a row and then gotten up and stopped so who knows but anyway I've done the fish lips kiss heel on both of them and I nearly just kept knitting with it but what I did uh, at the beginning of the heel I cut the yarn to stop the black so I think I did maybe two rows black then went round to the heel knit through with the colour and then it very conveniently went back to black so that the front stripes stayed the same. So that was very cool. Uh, you can see the rainbows are going in the opposite directions because I'm pulling from the centre and the outside of the ball. Hopefully Sophie won't mind that too much. She does really like this anime where one of the characters loves symmetry and so she started liking symmetry to be like the character. I'll just tell her it's mirror symmetry so she should be fine with it. <laughs> but these have been really fun. Um, plain vanilla just did, I think, two by two ribbing. Oh, I started with one by one ribbing for about five rows. Then I went to two by two uh, just until I got to the end of the black. And then just plain round and round and round, as I said, with the fish lips kiss heel. Very, very happy with those. So I'm nearly finished. I've got a little bit more maybe till I get to the toe decreases. So they will definitely be finished as well. I've got a lot of they will definitely, so fingers crossed on that. Really liking it and I really, really, really want to make myself some stripy socks now. But as I said before, too much on the Christmas list. So we'll wait and see. Next work in progress is something else for my Christmas list. Um, it's a pattern called Beans the Stuff Cat, which doesn't sound right, but Beans is his name. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, so I'll link it in the show notes. Um, this is a little beans but he hasn't been stuffed yet nor does he have a tail or face. Now this is the size, actually this is bigger than the size in the pattern, it's using the stitch count but this is with a worsted weight rather than the DK the pattern calls for. Um, and this is very cute but I wanted something bigger for a present so I've actually doubled the stitch size, uh, sorry stitch numbers and then just followed the pattern throughout. So the pattern calls you to cast off and then stitch that together to make the ears. But on the small one I just gave it a try with um, using the Kitchener stitch and I think, I mean, it looks fine. So once I've stuffed him, if it works, then I'm going to just Kitchener on future ones because I have to make a few of these. This yarn is so gorgeous. But, you know, pinks aren't usually my colour and, you know, this isn't for me so it's, it's not something I'm wearing. But this yarn colourway, so gorgeous. It's a little bit darker there than it is in real life. I'm trying to get it in the light. That's a bit better. Sorry. <laughs> this is Jinx yarn in the worsted base and the colourway is Howl's Castle which is a reference to the Studio Ghibli animated film Howl's Moving Castle. Really recommend it, that's a fabulous movie. Um, Studio Ghibli also does uh, Totoro and movies like that so awesome, awesome source. Um, so yeah, it's sort of really dusky colours and I just think it looks so beautiful knit up as well. Just stunning. So I've made those little guys, or you know, started making them, 
And as a needle adjacent, I'm going to be using this colour, sort of pink with some purples and blues. Also Jinx Worsted, and this is in a one of a kind, number 32. Um, so I'll be doing the same thing. I'm going to make a big cat with a little baby in the same way in that. So that way the recipients get a mummy and a baby. Um, so that's coming up, and those are very easy. Those are living in my Tangerine Designs fox bag. Very cute, because I love foxes. And there's a funny story behind my getting this bag, because you know things sell out and they get a reputation, so as soon as there's an update, you know, everyone's onto it. I often miss updates on Etsy because of the time difference. You know, sometimes they happen mega early hours of the morning for me, so I can't do it. This Tangerine Designs update was going to be at 9am on a work day. So I was all set and I told my manager, <laughs> this is a few months ago, it's not in my current job, not that it matters, but um, told my manager um, that, you know, I'd have to be offline from work for about five minutes at nine o'clock. And I had it there, I had, you know, I kept refreshing, refreshing. Just at like 30 seconds to nine, a colleague came up and asked me a question about work. <laughs> I had to say, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm trying to catch an Etsy update. Can I get back to you? So <laughs> Luckily it wasn't someone of a higher level than me that I couldn't do that to because I would have been devastated because I was all set and I had my trigger finger ready. But I got it, so. <laughs> and I'm very professional and don't do that all the time and I did have my manager's permission. <laughs> it's foxes. You have to make a sacrifice sometimes. Acquisitions. As I mentioned earlier when we were doing the prize draw, um, Katie, who's our KO or our chair from Colorado, I mentioned she would be coming up again. And the reason for that is uh, she has sent me some yarn for my Cozy Memories blanket. We did a bit of a little mini yarn swap together. She sent me this gorgeous historical Colorado postcard, which I just love. And these are the yarns that she sent me. Got this purple one. And these couple of these she actually dyed herself, I believe this one especially. Thank you Katie, it's very special to have your yarns and your hand dye, awesome. Um, a few people have also contacted me to say they'd like to send me some yarn, thank you very much for that. If you do have any spare scrap yarns in sock weight in reds, purples, greys or black, I will happily take them off your hands, so please send me a personal message on Ravelry and um, we can organise that. Thank you, Katie. That's very cool. I haven't sewn any of them in yet, and I haven't actually worked on my sock yarn blanket in a few weeks because I keep saying it, the Christmas knitting. <laughs> um, but I really want to get back into that because, you know, just do a, a square here or there. So I'll put it out there now. I'm going to do some before the next episode. Next acquisition, there's one for me and one for you, or at least one person for a future prize draw. From Stray Cat Sock Yarn. It's a cute company out of um, New Zealand. These gorgeous little boxes. Look at him, he's wearing socks. This is some very cute little yarn. Um, this is the one for me. Isn't that gorgeous? Christmas beautiful like a candy cane. Um, so red and white, stripey, gorgeous. This is the candy cane colorway. And for you guys as a prize, is this beauty which is called Frozen and we'll have that on a future prize draw in a couple of episodes time coming up to Christmas so thank you very much to Stray Cat Socks they're on Etsy um, very reasonable prices especially for self striping um, so check it out because especially with the exchange rate to the New Zealand dollar I think even with the postage that might be higher than domestic shipping in the US or to the UK um, I think you'll find that the exchange rate makes it a really good purchase, so go and have a look. Same for um, Skein and, um, oh, try and find it, Spinning Yarn Weaving Tails. Go and have a look at their shops. I know some people can be put off from paying international shipping, but as I said, because of the exchange rate, the American dollar and the pound are actually quite high against the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar for the Stray Cat Socks. So go and check them out because you'll get quite a good deal with your exchange rate and get good value for money. And it's extra shopping, what can you say no to?
Another acquisition I got in the last couple of weeks is a few patterns and that was very exciting because I won them as a prize. Um, the Cyborgs Craft Room Forum group in Ravelry has a finished object thread um, for each month and I had entered in my um, Hermione's Everyday Socks that I made in the Deep Dark Secrets colourway and my number came up in the random number generator and I was able to choose patterns up to $10. So I chose the Cool Clavicle Cover which is a shawl pattern by Megan Williams and the Wind's Chief hat, which I've forgotten the designer, it's one of the famous designers. Um, but that one's been in my queue for a while and I'm going to make um, a hat for someone who lives in my house. <laughs> it was very hard to choose a pattern because I really wanted to get the featherweight cardigan for myself because I showed you some yarn that I got from Query Fibers a few episodes ago and I really want to make that pattern. But um, I'm a broken record. The Christmas knitting. I had to get something. Um, as I said, the hat patterns for someone else. The cool clavicle cover is for me, but I won't be knitting it straight away. Um, but thank you very much, Megan, for running that competition. It was very exciting to win. And um, I will show you those patterns knit up as soon as I possibly can. spin me right round this week I'd like to say a big thank you to Dawn and James from the Wolf Farms podcast for their shout out about the Underwoman podcast thank you very much guys I'd also like to show you something that I meant to show you several weeks ago and I just kept forgetting because I put it away um, several weeks ago I showed you the beautiful shawl that Molly who is a homespun house sent me and she also sent me this gorgeous red bird of happiness it's the blue bird of happiness pattern but she's knit it with this gorgeous red yarn that I believe has camel in it, if I remember from when she was making it. So beautiful. As I said, I've had it um, in my craft area, which is why I didn't have it with me for previous recording. But thank you, Molly. I wanted to show everyone that. So cute. Something else I've enjoyed lately is going to my local library and finding an Australian yarn magazine. Um, I had to show you this cover. What have they done to that alpaca's fur? He doesn't look happy, does he? Look at that expression. <laughs> but this magazine yarn, um, as it says here, Australian magazine for knitting and more. Some of the patterns are not something I would wear personally, um, but they have got some cool articles. Every article has, uh, sorry, every edition has at least one thing that I find really interesting and. Um, even just to look through um, and for it to be an Australian magazine I think is really good. So they've got you know ads for Australian companies and it's really good to see something um, going through. As I said, a lot of it is not, not for me, but that's okay. It might be for someone else. And um, I just really like the chance to be able to look through something different and it's free as well. The library is a very good resource. For you again, one more look at the funny alpaca. Something that is not wasn't spinning me round at the time, but it was spinning me out, is we had a freak hailstorm yesterday, just in our suburb and a couple of suburbs around. It wasn't the whole of Perth. And it was sort of a bit of thunder and lightning, then it started raining, and then the hail came. And I've never seen hail fall like this. It was just instantaneous, these, you know, hail about so big, as in the circle part. <laughs> Um, just fell heavy and hard. Um, we actually thought one of our windows was going to break because it was hitting it straight on. We had to move the table in. And for about five minutes, this ice just fell and it looked like snow. We don't get snow ever in Perth. It just it doesn't happen. It's too, too warm. Um, and we're also in spring, entering summer. We've had days that have been, you know, 35 degrees earlier in the week, which is 80s or 90s in Fahrenheit. I'm not sure. Um, so this was just crazy, but very cool once it stopped. So here's some photos for you to have a look at because it was just so insanely cool. <laughs> and with that, I think I'll have to sign off for today. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for entering all the competitions and please go over and uh, enter our new contest. Give me what your opinion is on having a card swap, Christmas card or greeting card. And anything else you'd like to chat about, um, you can do so in the threads or send me a private message. As I said, I am Yonder Woman on Ravelry and Instagram. And I'm also going to have links in the show notes to Damien, uh, Damien K. Shields, because he's got another video to show you today. Uh, thank you for all your feedback on the previous episodes 
videos as well. Um, I'll have links to all the ways you can follow Damien's work, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, his blog, YouTube, because um, he's putting together some of these videos of his work. He also has all his prints and works in progress that he can show. So any of the options that you like for following along on social media, um, I'll put the links in for you to see. This video is called 42. Um, it's one of his most personal works to date. Uh, I really hope you enjoy it. He's also done the music for this one as well. And until next time, I'll leave you with that video and say happy crafting. Bye.